Now let's start digging into this case. Well, yesterday I just had a look into a folder of this repository where these two sets of files were generated. Here they are. There are many files inside and I've just decided to record all of these lectures uh, to actually illustrate what has happened during these two months. So I'm in the folder of my repository r underscore news reading, Twitter, fin sentiment, and then logs. This, these files should be uh, available in the repository. These are the series of files that contain a prediction of price change of Tesla Motors stock. Noted, notice the name of these files. It is always containing um, kind of a name predicted at. Then we have a date and time when these predictions were made. Of course, it would be uh, possible to, to just to take a piece of paper and record content of these predictions uh, by hand maybe writing it to another file and then plot the results, but this is not for this course. This is because <laughs> in a moment we will uh, read those um, all those files using R, statistical software, and we will be uh, very quickly getting into the results. Before that, let me show uh, that there are also several other files that we have here. It is uh, files with the name model quality. These files were generated on a weekly basis. These are, these are some metrics like um, achieved PNL, model quality, and some text. And the goal of this lecture will be to see how we can read content of such files and uh, analyze them later, right? So, by the way, these files, you know, once again, are logged into in the repository. So, feel free to actually uh, just execute this code in parallel and uh, to see what is going to happen on your computer. Now, I'm in the RStudio project. In order to follow this uh, lecture, I would be using um, a code, uh, which is you can find in the script number four, analyze results. All I'm going to do is to execute this code line by line, and I encourage you to do the same here. The first goal will be to read the names of this file, so getting them out from this folder. I'm going to use function list.files. So this function will obviously collect uh, all those uh, names into a vector. As I already know, these files are starting with a prefix, predicted underscore, um, at underscore, so this pattern I will be using to, um, to just select selectively uh, get those um, names, only those that contain these predictions. Then I will store them in this vector files to analyze. Remember to change the path shown here, so that of your computer. Now let me execute this line can see that this vector has many elements. In, in our uh, big data, we have 233 files. Let me inspect one of such files. It is always containing a column header, uh, this with the word predict, and then the value. My strategy will be to read actually each file one by one. Then I will extract the date and the time from uh, the file name, and then I will read the file content and kind of combine the results um, with the date. So it will be on, all, all in one row. So we have a name of each file stored in the, in the vector files to analyze. As we, um, uh, as we see, uh, we will now use a for loop to do several things. First, I will extract the date and the time of this prediction uh, because it's not recorded inside the file. Second, I will read comment, con content of the file, sorry. Then a third thing I will do, I will write the date of prediction to another data object, and <clears throat> if necessary, I will uh, aggregate that to the, to the new object. In order to simplify this process, let's first uh, solve this problem for the first element of the vector. So I will save the first element of the vector to the object file, I will just now execute this commented line 
and then I will be able to execute code inside this for loop. Here's my path. Notice that this path will always contain the prefix on the left as well as uh, .csv on the right. Now, my goal is to extract just a date from this object. So, uh, it's kind of in the middle and um, there is a probably way to do this using regular expressions just by detecting by detecting the, the, this uh, date object. However, I just preferring to a more simple approach because uh, I know that this pattern is repeating all the time the path and the, the name predicted at so I will be just removing that part on the left uh, which will be always the same so here you see that uh, I, I'm using this str underscore remove function to do that so I can kind of get rid of this left part then I will remove the right side of this uh, name which is dot csv part on the right after that, I would need to convert this, um, this text to a date. The easiest way to do this uh, will be to use function uh, in, which is in the lubridate package. Uh, it is ymd underscore hms function that will uh, just take this object and convert it to the date and time object. Just to check that our data piece is in the date format, I will execute the function class. The easy pick, uh, of course, is to read the file. It, it, it's just uh, we need the file path, basically. There is no need to comment this. Here is our data frame with the prediction. This prediction will need to have our date and time value. I will put that uh, in, in, in the other column, date and time and I will use mutate function to, to create this new column. So this is a predicted result which we have achieved in a, from one file. It is um, one row, it's a prediction, and in another, in another column we have a timestamp. Final goal of this for loop will be obviously to record this value somewhere else, right? So I will be doing this using this block of code. First, if statement would check if my object df all underscore predictions is not existing. If it would not exist, then we will create it simply by using our initial uh, data frame in the for loop. And then we, we will continue uh, just binding the rows uh, on, on the top. So uh, whenever Second and other times our object will be already created. Uh, the code after else condition will be generated, will be executed, sorry. We'll just be bending new row below the existing ones. Now let me clear everything from the environment uh, to execute this for loop. Boom, here's our predictions and corresponding times. They are all in this nice data frame. And uh, let's go into the next lecture to actually visualize this data. Thank you for watching.